Hello everyone, I am Abhishek Arya and welcome to the second season of interview experience exclusively in I Love Metallurgy channel. Today we have a very special guest with us, Sairi Ma'am, who recently cracked all the interview rounds of Cummins Inc. We are really keen to know what was her role in that company and interview it. Ma'am. Yeah, so thank you for the invitation, first of all. So my role in uh, Cummings would be to be an assistant manager, uh, but my the job description which I have been allocated will be decided based on my six months training, which they will provide from July next year. And uh, coming to my interview experience, uh, it was a really worthwhile uh, interview and I got to learn about my strengths as well as my weaknesses. And yes, I'll be sharing it with you in my further questions. Okay, so uh, I got to know this is a core based company. Uh, so what are the questions like what are the topics they basically ask in the interview? Yeah, so uh, Cummings is not actually a metallurgical core company. It is actually a, a mechanical based company which uh, designs and builds on uh, power generators and uh, diesel engines. So actually the role of a metallurgist there is for quality assurance. Uh, they are mainly uh, like they are really allocated the uh, department of quality, uh, checking with the quality of uh, the materials and all. And for a uh, materials engineer is required uh, to like check which steel grade is used for making which part of the engine, which components would be like uh, suitable for which steel grade and uh, like that. So uh, since it was not a very uh, poor like steel and iron or any other raw material company, so I actually predicted the questions and uh, they were like asking me to uh, choose any two specific uh, topics on which they would ask questions. Uh, so my I told them uh, instead of uh, choosing iron and steel making, since that was not a uh, that was not their uh, core uh, sector. So I told them that I was interested in mechanics mechanical metallurgy and physical metallurgy. So then they started questions, uh, asking questions regarding those two uh, subjects which I mentioned. So that was the thing and uh, the topics if you ask like uh, what all topics they asked was first of all the iron carbon diagram which is the fundamental question of every interview and next is the uh, heat treatment processes what is the difference between pearlite and cementite and all those things also surface hardening treatments like uh, carburizing nitriding plus uh, they also asked me questions based on like the uh, casting welding different processes like forging and uh, those very similar questions and uh, actually uh, if you like face any interview you will actually get to predict what your next question will be like whatever you answer based on that answer the, the next question will arise like you if you mention perlite the next question would be like give me the characteristics of perlite or in which temperature does it, does it exist and what is the difference between perlite and any other phase of the iron carbon dioxide so uh, you are actually driving your interview so you are controlling uh, the next question so that is in your hands okay so ma'am uh, there are like lot of topics uh, that you mentioned earlier so uh, how how did you prepare all, all of them like uh, you just stick to the college curriculum or you uh, you use some extra resources to work on that yeah so uh, mainly you should uh, like uh, according to me uh, you should uh, refer to the uh, books uh, of the particular subjects like if you take mechanical metallurgy then uh, then Dieter would be the best book from where you can refer to all your uh, fundamental topics and uh, whatever uh, thing which is covered that is enough like uh, for me it was enough to for uh, cracking any interview or any competition like gate or uh, any other uh, fields where, in whichever you are interested in so Dieter would be best for mechanical metallurgy similarly you have uh, Raghavan B Raghavan for physical and then you have that um, uh, thermo dynamics also you have uh, uh, then Gaskell and then you have that uh, heat treatment and 
casting welding these are all sub like uh, uh, topics which are not there in these specifically not uh, there are not any book for these topics but you can always refer to the internet you can uh, go to any site and then you can read upon that uh, one important to- topic which i uh, uh, like forgot to mention in my last question was the mechanical testing they uh, t- uh, like ask questions on that like what is the procedure for hardness test or uh, which uh, like uh, differentiate between the four uh, procedures in which hardness test is uh, like conducted and how do you measure the hardness of a rubber ball so these are all extra topics which are not there in any specific book but you have to refer to them either from the course pdfs which uh, our professor sent send us uh, sent to us or you can uh, also refer to in the internet as well so um, like my summary would be like you should uh, focus on the books first and then for uh, additional knowledge there is always the internet okay ma'am so uh next question was huh. yeah so i want to know like uh, like we want to know uh, like uh, any competitions related to core plays a major role in in the in, in the cv or does only cg good cg would be enough for the interview no no uh, what i feel is that uh, some competitive exams or not exam sorry some competitions from uh, uh, uh related to metallurgy like various colleges conduct uh, uh, metallurgical fests so i would uh, encourage you all to please participate in those fests because not only you get the exposure but you also get to experience the different topics which the other participants present and you get an insight on those topics as well so this is very helpful like uh, whenever you have to like uh, you are stuck in any topic and then you recall that this was the uh, thing that they presented so this might be the relative uh, relatable topic and then you search upon it and you get some more knowledge on it so this is a uh, very helpful so i think you should take part in more uh, metallurgical competitions and also it, it would be uh, a cherry on the cake if you like uh, uh, do some projects related to metallurgy like uh, you have we have that um, uh, vocational training which you can do in your second year so that will like Uh, you can do it uh, in the field you are interested in and that will be a uh, additional advantage which you have over others uh, in your cv and regarding the cg c cg pa uh, takes uh, plays a very important role when it comes to like uh, appearing for core interviews but like cg pa is not the ultimate aim your aim should be like of uh, whichever career you are interested in you should be like uh, focused on that cgpa is a uh, additional tool which takes you to that uh, towards your career so uh, for metallurgy i think 8.5 and above is uh, like suitable for your uh, for uh, in your cv so you don't run after your cgpa but yes you should have the uh, adequate amount of knowledge that whatever the question the interviewer asks you you must be able to answer them like if not the correct answer you should lead the interviewer in some way to towards the correct answer so that the interviewer is convinced that you know about the topic so uh, and one more point uh, which i want to tell is that uh, cgpa maintaining a like if you uh, have a great cgpa then the uh, interviewer expects that you should answer all the questions so that is a like uh, one more uh, if, uh, if you would say a disadvantage of having a very high cg because they would uh, expect that you are the uh, you are uh, familiar in all the topics which have been covered till now in your syllabus so they will ask you some advanced questions so see maintaining a decent cgpa is good uh, as i uh, in my opinion as well okay Uh, so ma'am uh, like apart from technical knowledge uh, what are the skills one should have for good to crack good companies related to core companies yeah, yeah so uh, first of all communication skills like uh, after just after technical comes your communication skills if you don't have the communication skills and you have immense uh, knowledge then it would be of no use because unless and until you are convincing the interviewer by expressing your thoughts your opinions on the topics which they have asked questions on it would be useless so uh, first point is to please practice speaking uh, whether it would be with your colleagues or friends or any uh, buddy in your circle you should speak openly uh, because uh, see uh, 
GD is one important round which is uh, conducted in almost every interviews now. So uh, G- in GD, the main thing which they observe is your communication skill, like how you present your topic to others, how you lead the team. So that is one very important uh, skill, which I would say is communication. Second is uh, you should also be focused on your co- uh, co-curricular activities, like uh, not only uh, studies, you should be well, of, uh, like uh, you should be very uh, versed in the all the co-curricular activities like whether it would be sports or any other technical uh, clubs which we have in our college so uh, that would like serve as an additional tool like they would uh, read your CV and they would be interested to know more about your uh, achievements in your co-curricular activity so uh, I, I think I had heard somebody saying that they had only led the entire in, uh, interview by uh, discussing about his achievements in the technical team like they were so interested the interviewer was so interested in knowing about his technical team and his achievements that they were very uh, curious and they were asking questions and he got selected just because of uh, his experience in uh, those technical activities which his team or club had conducted so i guess these two uh, skills one is the tech communication and second is the co-curricular activities should be uh, like an important playing an important role in your cv maintaining a decent cgpa is okay but uh, the two conditions is one is sincerity and second is dedication these two should be there in a uh, candidate who wants to crack uh, crack good companies uh, like uh, you should be uh, like uh, able to, uh, you should be able to convince the interviewer that you are genuinely interested to work in their company like when they ask you about your long term or short term goals you should say that uh, yes i want to work with your company because i i, I like my my goal is to uh, like uh, serve your company and uh, as well as uh, build my career uh, in your like in that field so like the interviewer should be genuinely convinced that you are uh, interested in working with their company that is a major point which uh, most of the interviewers look for in the candidates so uh, that's what what uh, i would say being a topper is not necessary but sincerity and dedication are the important factors okay so these were the questions that i wanted to ask ma'am but uh, any tips for uh, for any second year student like i am in a second year uh, so any tips or overall anything yeah, you want so, to do uh, yeah yeah so uh, my tip would be like uh, uh, based on my four years journey i would say that uh, your uh, second year would be mainly to focus on what career option you would uh, opt for after your uh, B.Tech degree. Like many are confused even in the third year or the beginning of the fourth year whether I should go for analytics or I should go for coding or I should go for code. So by the uh, end of second year you should be very much determined that I am going for code or I am going for analytics or I am going for coding. Uh, And then after uh, you are done with your decision then you can uh, start preparing your fundamentals right from the second year itself and uh, third year would be to focus on the more important topics uh, like in metallurgy if i would say so mechanical metallurgy is very important thermodynamics uh, which you are covering in second year itself that is also very important in physical metallurgy iron and steel making these are all the more important topics which will be covered in your third year itself so uh, third year would be to uh, grasp on the more important topics and fourth year would be to revise them again and again again and again because that is mainly what you uh, like have it on your mind when the interviewer asks you and you don't have uh, you don't feel nervous that i had read in my my second or third year and now I am not able to recollect it. So you need to just uh, revise it uh, while uh, practicing and third after your third year you have your internship so that also provides a great exposure to uh, you in your field. So uh, that is an extra advantage and uh, the next tip which I would suggest is that please be confident in your interview. Like. As I said, with your communication skills, uh, they should you will you should be able to convince the interviewer that uh, yes, I am confident in my area. I know what I am speaking, and I will be able to serve your position better than anybody else. You should be confident. You should uh, you should believe in yourself, and 
yes the most important thing that uh, while preparing or while in an interview please don't think about the outcome whether i will i will be selected or what will happen if i don't get selected and then what what or uh, other companies are left for me to uh, sit and prepare so please don't, don't think about the outcome give it your best and be confident and believe in yourself that's all i would say thank you ma'am it's such a pleasure to have you in here and thank you everyone for watching please do like and subscribe uh, for more awesome content thank you